So today guys, I'll make this video for you guys that want to buy the Mexica Blue MVT solar charge controller because I myself, I were very interested in it and I had so many questions, so I was like, I just, I'll just buy it and see how it works and I've never saw like the answers to the questions I have on YouTube so I'll make this video so I can start off by saying I've had this controller for almost one year now and it's produced 2000 kilowatt hours but I won't only show you the review after one year and how the unit looks I will also install an extra fan on it because it does overheat in the summer because the maximum power throughout the day is around 2.2 kilowatts which is actually a lot and it's running at full power all the time and I will explain to you how I see the cooling system and why it's badly engineered and how I will add this fan and it's really small but I think it will do a big difference as for the solar panels I have 642 volt solar panels they are two in series and three in parallel so the voltage at peak powers hovers around 66 volt to 90 volts and I find it pretty good with this controller it works fine and as I said, it produced two megawatt hours, which is a lot of free energy from the sun. So when I first got the unit, on the pictures, it looked kind of cheap. But when I got it, it actually felt kind of heavy and well made. It has this, if you would say, cheap casing, but it's actually well designed, I would say. It's very, it has a very simple design. But what I noticed right off the bat when I took it off my wall is this thing. It sounds when I shake it. It didn't do that when I got it. So I think the thermals unscrew some screws. So by unscrewing all the, how many were there? Six screws. You can now open the unit. I've never opened it before when it was new. So the first thing I see is that this connection is like bent. I would guess that's from the manufacturing. But other than that, I don't see anything more I can tell you guys. I'm not so good at all the electronics. But yeah, let's go to the cooling. So this fan, it sucks air out from the unit so air enters in here from like the bottom but mostly from the side then the air it passes through all these electronics and gets out of this fan and I noticed that this unit overheats a lot because the MOSFETs are actually faced and put on this side of the units and if it's facing the wall the wall will make all that heat just not being able to dissipate and the thing is that the heat needs to dissipate into this part of the controller and then get transferred through the mill so you can reach this part that actually dissipates the heat which i think is a bad design because there's no airflow through the part that actually needs cooling which is this part so that is what we will do with this little fan we'll take the controller and move it like one to two centimeters for us Europeans out from the wall and then we'll put this fan either behind or make a hole inside the unit because there is some space between the board and between the MOSFET so the air blows through and cools this whole plate so that's the idea and then I will test my theory and see if it works but for right now let's just open the unit and see how the MOSFETs are placed. So this part, I can't see anything that would be bad or anything. The fan is actually good quality compared to other fans I had it broke like after a couple of uses in other Chinese units. Yeah, this looks good. Now let's get into this one. You can already see the MOSFETs over here and it's like a very thick plate. 
inside of there it looks like a heat sink i guess so now i've taken the controller out so we have the thermal paddings some of them got stuck over here but we basically had screws that went through all of these mosfets to just keep them down but i've seen on youtube that there are different models of these so this one for example it has a heat sink compared to the other ones they're just thin metal so it's a better design than before but still i want some extra cooling through here here i guess this is the temperature sensor it's actually far away from the mosfet so they are probably much hotter than this thing is but wait will that interfere with the sensor if i have air flowing through here and it will actually calculate that it's less hot than it actually is I don't know if the engineers designed it in that way so air doesn't actually throw, flow through here so I might just take this fan because we have good cooling over here with this large heat sink and I might just put the fan right behind so the air doesn't flow here and all the dust will accumulate on all the parts that are behind the board so I think that will actually be a, be a better idea. So I put the unit back together. I cleaned it off a bit. This thing is still loose. And I guess I haven't damaged anything. So the next thing is just to make these two fans connect them in parallel. So this fan is 0 0.1 amps and this is 0. Point how much? 12 amps. So I don't think that DC to DC converter will have any problem with two fans in parallel. So I'll just parallel these two together and then make a pretty wire get out from the other side. So I can put this fan, I guess I will just put it over here, but we'll see. Or we can maybe also do something like this, that we put something like this over here and then the cooling fan will go through over here through over here because I still want the unit to be very small and I want don't want visible fans yeah I'll figure something out and we'll see but the simplest thing I would guess is just put the fan by the side of the unit so the f air can flow through and just make a gap between the wall and the unit since it got this huge heatsink inside of here. So as of right now, these two cables are in parallel for the fans. So I dragged it out through one of the vents and then I will solder it to this fan after I placed it. So I will close the unit up and see if it still works, if I haven't damaged anything. And then we'll try it out. So we'll test out this solution. We have the fan we installed before. And then I put some glue and some plastic over the edges where the air would have escaped. The air is flowing from the back and coming out over here. So we'll test it out when the sun comes out. So this is the power we usually see at peak times during the day, which is around 2.3 kilowatts which is full power for the unit. But over the one year period, it's held up so well. I've never had any problem except overheating. But now as you guys can see, it usually was at 70 degrees Celsius, close to shut off temperature. And now it's at 45, 46, hovering around that. So my solution definitely worked. It will keep the unit cool and preserve its longevity. So as you can see, it's 60 amps. Here we got 2.6 kilowatts at some points, but overall my final verdict for someone building a solar system, this is a very good MPPT solar charge controller. In my case, I wanted the cheapest unit. And in my opinion, this is a very good unit for a price. Of course, you don't have the high tech stuff of internet connection. There's a model with internet connection, but I didn't get that one, but it does the job. It converts energy and it works flawlessly so I would definitely recommend it and I would definitely buy it again if it broke 
because it's so simple you can change the parameters to the maximum voltage and it's gonna do its job it does very fast tracking of the solar panels when clouds come over so there's no problem with that and here on the thermal camera you can also see that it didn't get so hot and batteries are cool so now the system is fully operating all the batteries are working i changed the inverter to a 5 kilowatt inverter because the other 2.5 kilowatt inverter tripped all the time and i also made this fuse box which goes to each room in the house. So I have the ability to switch inside the house between solar or the grid. That's why I have this connection. This is the grid connection. So for winter, we don't have so much sun. So when the inverter shuts down, when the battery is empty, then I can switch between solar power and grid power. So I just switch these cables between each other. This video is specific to the controller. But I have another video of the whole system, so if you want to go and check that out, how everything is connected, where the batteries are from, spoiler alert, they are from recycled scooter batteries, go and check that video out. And I will walk you through the whole system. guys if you want to see the whole system overview how i got the batteries the solar panels the inverter how everything is connected i have a separate video for that so if you're interested go and check it out i will spoil a little bit that all these batteries are from the recycling center from old electric scooters and they are still almost at 100 percent capacity and left all these boxes are not from tesla they are homemade and fireproof kinda